If you go to any country, they will always say, oh, Bhutan, they don't even know we exist. I mean, people, whenever I said I was going to Bhutan, they go, where? It's in the middle from the Himalaya, upstairs from India, downstairs from China. You could be excused for not knowing of Bhutan or where it is on the planet. It's a tiny country, hidden in the Himalayan shadows of its two giant neighbors, India and China. A kingdom which insulates itself from external influences. And while the rest of the world continues to pound the treadmill of economic development, Bhutan continues on its somewhat alternative path, pursuing the ultimate goal for its people, happiness. In a recent survey, 97% of Bhutanese declare themselves to be happy. But why? In terms of material wealth, Bhutan hardly registers on the world index. So what is it about this kingdom that generates so much contentment? The kingdom's guiding principles are based on the Buddhist belief in the sanctity of life, the preservation of nature, and returning to the earth what has been taken from it a land where people have traditionally lived in harmony with their environment. It owes much to its benevolent kings who have constantly evaluated and rejected technological advances in order to preserve the fascinating culture. For most of the 20th century, there were no cars, telephones, or even post offices to allow communication with the outside world. I think Bhutan is Bhutan because of the type of kings that we've had. And anything and everything that we have over here in this country is because of his ideas and his intervention, the selfless devotion that the kings have given for the people of this country. The uniqueness in our identity is our culture again, our language, our traditions, our social customs. And Bhutanese can have long hair style, Bhutanese can have short hair. But what distinguishes Bhutanese from others is our dress code. Uh, and, and that I see as an important uh, you know, element of, of maintaining our culture. I'm so totally glad that the government said, OK, you have a dress code to, in all public areas. But this is our national identity. We are such a small country sandwiched between two giants. You know, imagine what would happen if uh, everyone just decided to go wear Western clothes and. Uh, uh, what would become of Little Bhutan with only 600,000 people? I mean, what identity would we have left? But it's not only the traditional men's go and women's care that makes the kingdom special. By anyone's standards, Bhutan is certainly different. And while much of its identity is similar to Tibet's, it is the only country in the world which practices tantric Buddhism, a mixture of tradition, mythology and superstition where spirits, deities, and astrologers are part of everyday life. People are very uh, religious and very superstitious also. That has kept uh, the Bhutanese people peaceful. I have to consult the astrologer. So he looks at uh, good deeds, you know, when my stars are good. Almost everything is consulted, you know. Like uh, when you build a house also, uh, Although the land may be owned by you, but the, actually the spirits own them. So we have to get an astrologer and, you know, beg for that land from the local deities. So the astrologer is like a doctor. He diagnoses what are the problems, and then the monks can come and do the rituals to remove that problem. And when the house is eventually built, interesting decoration ensures that good luck will be ongoing. It's this fascinating culture that now attracts tourists, eager to observe a remote corner of the world that has developed independently of many of the influences which shape almost all other countries. After centuries of self-imposed isolation, Bhutan has tentatively opened its mystical doors to the world, initially issuing small quotas of visas and steadily increasing these to the thousands of tourists who now visit this very special country.
available now on iTunes.